Our next topic is about change of state. We are having three states of matter. They are solid, liquid and gas. Now we are going to convert solid into liquid and liquid into gas and vice versa. Gas into liquid and liquid into solid. For this we have to supply some amount of energy. For converting solid to liquid we must supply heat energy. That is the system must be supplied some heat energy for the conversion of solid to liquid and to liquid to gas. And for the conversion of gas into liquid and liquid into solid we must remove we must remove the heat energy we must remove the heat energy in order to convert gas into liquid and liquid into solid that is on getting heat energy to solid the bond between the molecule breaks and it is less likely attracted by the molecules so it will lose its solid form and but in it is in a liquid state and even if we are applying this is the solid and this is the liquid and even then we are applying the heat energy it will break the bond between the molecules or the atoms and it will free to move that is we, we get gaseous state okay now we are going to discuss some of the experiment that is used to define the two points that is the change of state occur at particular temperature that we are going to study it in a detailed way. In this experiment, take a beaker and put some ice cube in it and we are placing a thermometer to measure the temperature in degree Celsius and also we are taking a stopwatch to measure the time and in the tabular column we are measuring the time and temperature. We are starting at the time 0 seconds or initial time we are having ice and the temperature of ice is about consider let us assume it is 10 degrees Celsius. The temperature is in degrees Celsius time in seconds space. And we are giving some amount of energy to the system. It is delta Q. That is heat energy. This is the heat energy. And we know that after some time, the heat energy is absorbed by the ice and it will melt. Okay. Before going that, consider at the time T is equal to 0, the temperature of the ice is minus 10 degree Celsius and for the next 5 seconds the temperature of the ice rises to minus 5 degrees Celsius and after some 10 seconds it will become minus 3 degree and for 15 seconds it is having 2 minus 2 degrees Celsius and after some 20 seconds it attains 0 degree Celsius. It is not up to the correct value since we are taking just for the theoretical explanation we are taking some of the values and we, when we plot this and we are getting a straight line here. It is a straight line that is it is directly proportional to the time uh, the heat. This is the heat added and it is the temperature. That is the heat added is used in rise in temperature. 
and we we know that when we measure also when delta q is measured and we can say that we are con we are giving a constant supply of energy that is this is 1 joule 2 joule 3 joule etc and this a 5 we are we are not stopping the energy that is con continuously given to the system and we are just measuring the temperature okay then the first this reading that is from say minus 10 degree celsius to 2 degree celsius we are giving some of the energy and the temperature is increasing here minus 10 degree to minus 2 degree celsius the graph will be like the straight line that is the so here it is in solid state that is i state it is now at 0 degree celsius okay then again we increase the energy and for the next seconds we can see that the temperature of the system will not increase but it is in a constant state that is this area it is constant and it is here it is increasing it is a constant that portion is defined by the straight line that is it is at 0 degree celsius we can say that at this temperature solid here it is solid plus liquid or ice plus water is coexist in this area in this area and the energy that is from 5 joule to 8 joule about 3 joules of energy is consumed for the change of state the energy is used for not to increase the temperature but for the change of state that is the temperature here it is the 0 degree celsius at 0 degree celsius the change of state occurs that is from ice to water or from solid to liquid that point the temperature that temperature is called melting point that temperature is called melting point at melting point we can say that it is having ice plus water the system is having two state that is ice plus water or solid plus liquid that coexist in thermal equilibrium and this is at 1 atm pressure it is called the normal melting point 0 degree celsius is the normal melting point of water that is at 1 atm pressure that is 1 atmospheric pressure we are having a melting point of water at 0 degree celsius and at this time the mel the process melting occurs and we can see here in the beaker ice plus water we are having ice plus water okay this is the case of melting point and when we increase the temperature we are already we are giving a continuous value of heat and we are measuring the time that is 40 seconds 50 seconds 55 seconds the value then rises to 1 degree this in a linear way that is 5 degree celsius 10 degree celsius up to the the value will go up to 100 degree celsius for suppose it is about 100 seconds it is about 100 degree celsius and again we draw then we can say that it is the temperature is increasing here and in the graph we are also having the 
stay straight line here and the form of the system is in liquid state the system is in liquid state and when we reach when we reach the temperature 100 degrees celsius if we further increase the amount of heat energy and we measure the temperature again we can say that it is at constant temperature that portion is here that is here the process the at this time the water is started to boiling and here also we can say that the change of state occurs the change of state occurs at 100 degrees celsius is called boiling point here the system is containing liquid and gaseous state coexist in equilibrium okay this is the two phases and after it again it rises to 101 and etc it is increasing and we are having a gaseous state here that is here that is the gaseous state after 100 degrees celsius say 110 etc that here we, we are having two temperature we are studied the two temperature that are melting point and boiling point these are the most important case of when we say about change of state and when we plot time versus temperature and we can say that at the time when ice is changes to water there is no increase in temperature and and also here also it is no change in temperature at boiling point okay and these are the main points about change of state and also we can say that at atmospheric pressure we can say that it is normal boiling point and normal melting point and also we can say that when pressure changes when pressure changes melting point and boiling point also changes it is, uh, that is melting point and boiling point depends on the pressure and at atmospheric pressure it is the standard or the normal melting point now we are going to discuss the effect of pressure on melting point we already discussed the melting point what is melting point also we discussed at normal pressure that is at atmospheric pressure the melting point of ice is about zero degrees celsius and it is called normal melting point okay now we are giving pressure wave differences to the system and we are now going to discuss the effect of pressure on the melting point for that consider an experiment and consider the picture in the picture we are having a large ice slab and at the midpoint of it it is a a metallic wire and at the end of the wire we are having suppose say 5 kilogram of weight is applied on the metallic wire and after some time we can say that the metallic wire goes into the ice slab and eventually it goes down down and escape from the ice slab without splitting the ice slab this is because under the metallic wire the ice is under a pressure we know that pressure is the force per area the force is here is 5 kilogram and the area is very small so the, the area under the metallic wire is under a great pressure and due to having high pressure 
before reaching the 0 degree celsius the ice melt at low temperature the ice melt at low temperature and it melts but here it is 0 degree celsius here it is 0 degree celsius at this the, the at this area that is the when we where we apply pressure the melting point is very low uh, so it first melt before the surrounding areas it is at 0 degree and it is at 0 degree this this it, it melt so it will go through and it uh, eventually it will escape from the slab and once when the metallic wire is goes below the area the surface above is under again 1 atm pressure that is the pressure is not applicable after it will go deep into the ice lamp so it again freezes at 0 degree celsius so, so there is no because it is the surrounding is having 0 degree celsius the area here is also is attain 0 degree celsius because of the surrounding temperature the the pressure is where the pressure is high that there will have a low temperature so the ice melt under high pressure thus the wire passes through the slab and the slab does not split this phenomenon of refreeze refreezing the phenomenon of refreezing of ice is called regelation that is called regelation the refreezing of ice when we remove the pressure is called regelation for example in snow placed areas that is skating we know that skating should have a blade of a smaller area that is because under the skating it is having a high pressure due to the weight of the person so the ice melt very quickly and because of this the water form due to the increase of pressure and it is act as a lubricant so one can skate through the snow very easily this is called regelation now we are going to discuss about the effect of pressure on boiling point we already know that at 1 atm pressure the boiling point of water is 100 degree celsius which is called the normal boiling point now here we are going to do some experiment in order to study the effect of pressure on boiling point for that consider a round water flask which is filled with which is half filled with water this is water and we are giving some heat energy and to the measurement of temperature we are having a thermometer and it is the steam outlet when we apply heat energy to the flask the water absorbs heat energy and it rises the temperature the temperature rises and on reaching about 90 degrees celsius we can say that a small bubble or bubbles are formed inside the round water flask and that bubble is the air that dissolves inside the water and later the bubble of steam will form at the bottom and they rise to the cooler water near the top. We, we know that this is the cooler part. The, the bubble will uh, move to the cooler part and they condense and disappear. And uh, as, they, as they are carrying energy, so they are disappear through the steam outlet. Finally, in this state, we can say that at the, as the temperature of the entire mass of the water reaches 100 degrees Celsius and after this the water is attaining 100 degrees Celsius, the bubble of steam reaches the surface and 
boiling starts occur at this time the boiling starts the steam in the flask may not be visible but as it comes out of the flask it condenses as tiny droplets of water giving a foggy appearance that is the round water flask is getting filled with steam of water and it is not visible to us that is it is filled with a foggy appearances of the steam okay this is the first section and that is the water started boiling at 100 degree celsius okay now this is the first case and on the second moving on to the second case now we are closing the steam outlet for a few second to increase the pressure in the flask now we can say that uh, when steam outlet is closed the steam increases here and also because of that the pressure of the uh, air above the water increases and we can say that the bubble is stopped uh, that we can say that when pressure increases boiling stops and we, we cannot see air bubbles here okay more heat would be required to raise the temperature before boiling begins again and at that time the system is absorbing more energy because there is a high pressure in the in the flask for reaching the boiling point it will it would require more energy so it again absorb heat energy and it increases that is it increases the boiling point that is the boiling point is now is greater than uh, 100 degree celsius for moving on to the third case now remove the burner now now we are removing the burner and we are allowing water to cool about 80 degree celsius and then remove the thermometer and steam outlet we are removing this two and closing the flask with air tight cork and keep the flask turned upside down on the stand now the position of the flask will be in the upside down that is air like this we are closed to this and we are having water at 80 degree celsius okay then pour some ice cold water ice cold water we are pouring ice cold water on the flask the water vapor in the flask condenses that then we are having a water vapor here and the water vapor condenses so the pressure decreases and boiling point also decreases the boiling point also decreases with decrease in pressure and the pressure on the water surface inside the flask also decreases and water begins to boil and the water boils at low temperature and water boils at low temperature these are the cases at atmospheric pressure it is boil at 100 degree celsius and boiling point is equal to 100 degree celsius and when pressure increases boiling point increases and when pressure decreases boiling point also decreases this these are the effect of pressure on boiling point of water and we can we can see some of the example as that is why we are uh, we are using pressure cooker the pressure cooker is one of the 
example of this principle. That is, when we, we can say that the hard objects that, such as meat, uh, proteins, etc., it requires a lot of energy uh, for the boiling. We can say that at 100 degrees Celsius, the water inside the cooker, we can say that this is a cooker, the water, when we, it is in atmospheric pressure and we are having some meat here and we are having some water here, at atmospheric pressure, uh, at 100 degrees Celsius, the water boils and evaporates and evaporates. But the uh, the the food material which is harder to cook is still uh, there without cooked without cooked because it needs more energy for the cooking process. So when we put the material in a cooker in a cooker that that, that is the pressure inside the cooker is higher than that of the atmospheric pressure. So the boiling point of the cooker, pressure cooker increases and the water inside the cooker is boils only at 120 degrees Celsius. And on reaching this temperature, while reaching this temperature, the food material here in it is attaining, getting more energy because it will not go, uh, boil at 100 degrees Celsius but at 120 degrees Celsius it, the amount of energy is now used to, to cook. The extra energy is used to cook the material. That is why we are using pressure cooker for easy cooking. Also, this is one of the example and it is at higher temperature, a higher altitude areas, that is hill stations, we are having difficult in cooking meals because of at high altitude, atmospheric pressure is lower, reducing the boiling point of water as compared to sea level, that is there it is the pressure decreases so boiling point also decreases and it uh, will evaporate the water will evaporate about 80 degree Celsius and the the food material will will not get cooked at 80 degree Celsius so we use pressure cooker at higher altitude areas and this is one of the application of the effect of pressure on boiling point.